the previous lesson, we introduced you how you can add a navigation bar to a bootstrap, how you can place it and get it fixed at the top. So even if you're scrolling down, that navigation bar is persistent right at the top of the page. So there's a few other things that we need to add into the navigation bar in order to make it more responsive. Because notice now, whenever I shrink it down, well, it doesn't really shrink down really well. And if we're on smaller screen devices, we don't want these navigation items stacking in this type of format. We want to have that typical hamburger icon that we can click and then we see the rest of the navigation bar. And this is one of those crucial things within navigation bars that you should add in, especially when you're designing for mobile devices and thinking for different size screens. So always take a look at your code, resize it within your browser, and just see how it behaves and see how it will possibly look on the smaller size screens. There's also another really good trick with Google Chrome. So you can do that inspect here. Uh, we can also see the device, we can toggle the different device size toolbar, we can see it within different sizes. So we can do something where when we press this toggle here, we can see that we've got now a responsive view, we can resize it, we can see what it looks like. We can also use these presets for the different sizes of devices, so that's the iPhone 6 and so on. So there's a lot of options within Chrome, within Chrome in order to better see and better test out what it's going to look like. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's update our source code and add in that collapsible menu item. And usually I like to use buttons because it just makes sense because a button would typically have that ability to, uh, that toggler for the nav bar. And Bootstrap has actually called it the nav bar toggler. So make sure that you've got toggler instead of nav bar toggle. Uh, so this was with Bootstrap 3. Uh, it used to be called navbar toggle, so now we're navbar toggler for Bootstrap 4. So that's another one of those differences between the Bootstrap versions. Uh, so we've also got ability within Bootstrap 4 to specify what the breaking point of the screen size is when we hide certain elements and we show them. So we want to hide this on sizes SM, so small screen sizes and up. Uh, so that's where I'm adding in hidden SM up. And we also need to make sure that we're actually showing content on the other side, on the downside. So I'm going to add that in as well. And we need to also specify the color that we want to use. So we've got a dark navigation bar. So we want to make this light in color. Uh, so another attribute that we want to add in is we want to specify that this is a button and we want to give it another attribute, so this is our bootstrap attributes that help bootstrap determine what should happen when it actually gets clicked. So this is actually going to be a data toggle collapse feature component within bootstrap. So we need to specify that as well. Uh, we need to also specify a data target. Uh, so Bootstrap uses these data attributes within the elements in order to be more specific and it takes that information that we need in order to make all of these nice actions happen. So data target is going to refer to the ID of the content, the element that you want to hide. So we're going to give it um, a hash to specify that this is going to be an ID element that we want to hide and we're going to give it or we can just call it mini menu or something like that. Uh, so now our data target is going to specify that we're going to be targeting the element with the name of mini menu. So let's save this code at this point. We've added in the button and let's take a look and see what it looks like within our web page. So notice that whenever we go out to full size and remember I've got my screen zoomed in. So if I go back to 100% and let's resize the screen. So notice that as I'm resizing and I hit that small size for the screen output, I get my hamburger icon showing up. So it's not yet hiding. Uh, these navigation items and that's because we haven't set up the target yet so it's looking for the mini menu target it's not finding it because we haven't defined it yet so let's go ahead and define that uh, so for a container I'm just going to use 
I'm going to just use a div for the container. And remember, we need to specify that same ID that it's going to be looking for here. So let's give this div an ID of mini menu. And uh, we need to also specify some classes here. So these are bootstrap, uh, bootstrap classes. And the first class that I want to specify is that this is the collapse class. And also nav bar. So the collapse class is going to be in line with the data toggle collapse. And this is all just so that Bootstrap can create the functionality that we're looking for. Uh, the nav bar and the class is called toggleable. And we need to specify a parameter here as well. So a size. So we want to make it toggleable on excess. And let's close that off and we're going to wrap. So we're going to grab the end div here and wrap this unordered list within there. Uh, so now we've got our button, we've got our menu, mini menu. So it's collapsible now on the resize. So when I refresh it, uh, so now we've got our menu item opening and closing and everything's working as expected. Uh, so typically whenever we resize, we want to have this menu in place and we want to be able to open and close it. So there's a few other quick tips. Uh, tips that you might want to do. Uh, so typically you might see this over on the right hand side. Uh, so we can really easily with Bootstrap uh, make those changes. And this is where the beauty of Bootstrap is that we don't have to worry about uh, adding in all these different floats and so on. It's already got predefined classes that can do all of this. So we're going to float it on excess screens. So excess and up to the right. And again this is specifying what size of breaking point we're looking for on the screen size. So excess, excess, and this is again, this is new with Bootstrap 4 where we've got ability to really fine tune where these breaking points are within Bootstrap. So let's take a look at that and see what this looks like now. So we see that we get that menu pulled over on the right hand side. We can open and close it uh, at any time and we can just simply click open and close it. Uh, so there we go. So now we've created our essentially we're all ready to go with our nav bar and if we want to customize it we can add in our customizations and so on. So in the next lesson let's look at our head content because as I mentioned this is going to be a one page website so we're going to have a number of sections and we want to have our main introduction head section and then followed by the additional about me section or the about section, product section and contact section and then finally a footer. And then we want all of this to work together. We're going to also have to move the content down because notice here that some of that content now is hidden under the navigation menu. Uh, so we see that as we readjust size, uh, we've got more text there because this is still hiding underneath this navigation bar. So all of these things are going to have to be taken care of when we fine tune the CSS. But first of all, let's create all of our sections within our web page. So the next lesson, we're going to create our head section.